Welcome back to the Mott Miller YouTube channel. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the awesome range of equipment that's available for small scale distillation. Now, before we get too far into today's video and start talking about the equipment that's available, we've got an important thing to just mention, haven't we, Mark? Before we go getting into the equipment, just please check out what rules and regulations are applicable based on where you are living. We're not gonna cover that off in this video. We're purely gonna talk about the equipment that is available. Right, James, so what have we got in front of us here? Well, Mark, we have um, three items that really distinguish the three different options that are available for people that are looking to get into small scale distillation, okay? And we'll go into more detail uh, as we move forward, but for anybody that hasn't, um, hasn't looked at distillation previously, um, this video is gonna cover kind of a little bit of what distillation is, the differences in some of the equipment, and how they operate in different use cases, all right? Okay. Now, the first thing we're gonna look at in this video is actually what is distilling, right? And it's simplest form, what is distilling? Now, if you're a home brewer of beer, wine, cider, that kind of thing, what you're doing is you're converting sugars that are present in that liquid into alcohol through fermentation that's done by yeast. Now, I would imagine that anybody watching this video would probably be familiar with that. Once you've done that, you've got alcohol in a solution with other ingredients. You know, in beer, you've got residual sugars that are left, you've got, you know, some of the flavor compounds from hops, all that kind of stuff, but there's alcohol in there. Now, what distillation is, is ultimately a separation of the alcohol from the rest of what is in that liquid, okay? Um, that's what we're doing when we talk about distillation. We're removing the alcohol from the rest of that liquid and purifying it and leaving it in a, uh, a, a smaller quantity, a higher ABV, okay? Okay. There are various different ways to do that, um, which again, we're gonna come on to, and different options of equipment, but at its heart, that's what the process is. So we've got three bits of equipment here. Yep. I'm guessing there's kind of different ways to leave different amounts of flavor in the alcohol, and these all do it in different ways. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I think, the best way to distinguish this is um, if you enjoy drinking spirits, you'll know that there are some spirits that have lots of flavor in them, such as whiskey, rum, and then there are other spirits that have very little flavor in them, such as vodka. Now, that pro th those flavors are left there or removed through two different methods of distillation, okay? And the equipment that's available uh, now for small scale distillation means that actually you can do either of those if you want to, okay? If we talk about, to begin with, the, um, the process where you go on to make a flavoursome spirit. So you're aiming to keep some of the malt and the yeast flavours in there? Yeah, yeah, so it might be something like a whiskey where you want to uh, retain the, uh, the flavour of the grain, some of the yeast character, um, or a rum where you've got like a molasses in there that you want to keep some of that like real deep flavour. Um, actually, what uh, the distillation method that's used for that is called pot distillation. And we'll come on to more of that in a minute, but ultimately you're doing what's called like a single distillation, um, uh, which is gonna retain loads and loads of flavor. When we talk about producing a neutral spirit, which has very little residual flavor, so a clean spirit, something like a vodka, we're using a slightly different method called uh, reflux distillation. And that reflux distillation is, best way to describe it is lots of miniature distillations happening as, as well as doing the main distillation. And throughout that process, you're purifying the alcohol that's coming out of the still further and further and further. So in one run, you end up with something that's incredibly pure, incredibly clean. So now, Mark, let's take a little bit of a closer look at the different types of still that are available for small scale distillation, okay? Yeah. Now, you've visited some distilleries, haven't yeah, you, in I've the past? Yeah, I've been to distilleries, and you know, like these kind of have a similarity look to things I've seen. You know, you've seen things with copper domes and kind of big, huge columns. Yeah. So kind of... These are miniaturized versions, Yeah, right? so do you want to talk me through what the difference is between these two and yes. what they do differently? Yes, absolutely. So to start off with, let's talk about the Alembic Dome over here. Now, this is a copper Alembic Dome. It's entirely copper. It's from Still Spirits, and then attached to it is a copper condenser arm, 
okay? I'll come on to how that runs and what it does in a minute, but actually we need two separate things. So we need our still, which is this section up here, and we need a boiler, which is a heat source. Yep. In this case, we've got it attached to a grain father. Yeah, I thought it looked familiar. Yeah, um, and then over here, we've got it attached to a dedicated boiler, okay? They both do the same job, which is applying heat to the wash. Now, a wash is um, a fermented liquid, like a beer or a wine or a cider, um, that has had yeast added to it. The yeast has converted the sugars into alcohol, so we now have alcohol in dilution in this liquid. We pour that liquid into here, we turn these on, and it heats up. Yep. What we don't want to do is boil it, though. So actually, where the grain father really comes into its own is we can change the control box into like a power control mode rather than a temperature mode. You set it to 80%. It's never going to bring the, the liquid to a boil. But what it will do is evaporate the alcohol and turn it into vapor that's held within the liquid because the boiling point of alcohol is far lower than water. And so you can then flex that percentage up and down as you oh, okay, yeah, cool. as you're going through the process, which, you know, again, we can't go too far into the process and how to and that kind of stuff, but loosely speaking, that's what you would do. So that vapor then rises up into our copper um, still. Yeah. Then through the top of here into our condenser arm. Now inside the condenser arm, there's a chamber where you run water. You attach water um, going into here, and then water comes out here. So it's a bit like your chiller when you're chilling your wort after brewing. Exactly, because what we water have to- Water going around the outside of the hot. Yeah. yeah. What we have to do is cool the vapor down so it turns back into a liquid. Okay. Because otherwise we just have alcohol vapor coming out at the end of here. That's not good. We want liquid coming out. So if we're doing our job properly, we then get liquid coming out at the end of here, which is alcohol and that alcohol will retain a huge amount of the flavor of whatever we put into here. Remember, pot distillation is used for flavorsome spirits where we want to retain the flavor, such as a whiskey or a rum, that we may then go and put into like an oak barrel or onto oak chips to age for a while to allow those flavors to really develop and come out. But there's no reason you can't do a clean spirit in this as well, is no, there? No, there's not. It's just going to be a little bit more difficult and more work. Yes, you can do a neutral spirit in one of these, but the amount of times you're going to have to distill it is going to increase, okay? Because actually, something you said earlier was all about the levels and the surface. So I'm guessing the dome is the surface. It's very limited compared to what we've got going on here, here, which we'll come on to in a minute. Don't run away. Okay. Um, what happens, though, is inside the copper dome, as the vapour rises up, some of it is going to condense on the inside of here and drip back down. That does two things. It helps to slightly increase the purification of the spirit as it's going through the condenser, so we don't get some of the nastier flavours come mm -hmm. through, and it increases the ABV that's coming out, okay? Um, and it puts you know, some of that watery liquid back in, which we just don't want in our finished product. Make sense? Yes, so far. So James, talk to me about what's going on here and what is different with what this is, the T500, you say? Yes. It just looks a little bit more kind of modern and scientific compared to something all shiny and copper. Yeah, okay. Well, first of all, let's just, um, let's just remember that we're doing the same job with distilling. We're separating the alcohol from our wash, okay? So both the boilers are going to do the same job, so we don't need to talk about that. What, where things start to change is when we get to the top here. Now, the alcohol vapour is going to evaporate in the same way that it would over here, but then what happens is it passes into this chamber here, this long column, all right? Okay. So it goes through this column and then down through the condenser here, okay? Now, what's happening in that condenser is the, uh, the, the water is going through and starting to chill the alcohol vapour down. So that's like the arm on there? Yeah, right. yeah. So then we get the warmer water come out here, and the alcohol starts to come out here, all right? And we're collecting that over here. But the difference is that on this still, we're gonna be um, uh, collecting alcohol that's gonna be in excess of 90% potentially. Whereas over here, we're probably looking at between 50 and 70%, depending on where we are in the process. And how it does that is that inside this column, it is packed with what's called saddles. Now saddles are just small pieces of metal. And in this case, we've got probably about 90% of the saddles are stainless steel. 
and the other 10% or so are copper. And what these do is provide a huge amount of surface area that is also able to conduct heat really well. As the alcohol vapour passes up through, it's not just alcohol in there, there will be some water, there will be some other compounds and that kind of stuff, as we've talked about over here, because that shows up as flavour at the end yeah. at a lower ABV. As the vapour's passing up through it, it recondenses onto some of that, um, that surface area, so those, those saddles. Then as the vapour uh, condenses, it starts to drip back down through the still, but the hot vapour that's coming up through redistills the alcohol that's within that. So what you end up with is this reflux distillation where lots of miniature distillations are happening throughout the process and the alcohol that comes out at the end as a result of that is far purer, far cleaner and has less, uh, less water in it because that's what's dropping all the way back down into the bottom of the boiler again and going through the process. So it's like lots of little distillations happening all the way through on that. Yeah, yeah. Versus the one, which is just that one big pot still alembic dome. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's really, really efficient. You end up with really clean spirit at the end that actually can be really versatile and you can go on to do lots with, such as using the essences that still spirits do to flavor your spirit in any way, shape or form you want. And there's so many of those available or you can actually then use the distillate that you've collected, the spirit, to then go on and make your own gin, okay? Well, would you be able to do that in this? Does this retain flavour if you were making gin? Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Um, and there's a couple of different ways to do it. You can leave the saddles in, although you're probably not going to get the best benefit, but you can take the saddles out of this as well if right, you okay. wanted to, okay? Um, which does mean that the, uh, the, the column um, stills, the reflux stills, the ones that you can remove the saddles on, you can still do a form of pot distillation in a similar way that you have over here. So you've got more versatility. There is a benefit to using copper, okay? Now this is predominantly made from stainless steel. There is a fully copper version available. And remember I said there are some copper saddles in there okay. and copper is used over here as well. The reason it's useful is partly because of its ability to conduct heat, which makes it perfect for the distillation process. But also it does, um, does help to remove some particular compounds that you don't want showing up in your uh, your finished product okay so that's why generally you see quite a lot of copper stills even column stills um, or you know you could if you wanted to replace all of the saddles in this with copper saddles if you really wanted to that'd be spendy it would be because copper's not cheap no it's not okay no. both of these stills use water to condense the alcohol vapor to cool it back down so that we end up with alcohol at the end there is another way to do that. What's that then? Using air. Now, the really small still in front of us here that you see is an air still, and it uses cooler air and a fan to do that condensing, to cool the vapor down, all right? Which means for really small scale, it is the perfect solution because you don't have to have any running water it's running through this. It thing. is a really nice compact size. It's like the size of a coffee machine, like an espresso machine. It is. And where this is really, really beneficial um, in distilling and certainly within commercial distilling is you want to do test batches. You know, you want to trial new flavors or you want to run a, a single particular botanical so that you can understand how that shows up in flavor when you're talking about recipe building. That's the perfect solution for it. Or if you just want to make a few bottles of spirit in one go. So what's the bat size on that? Right, the oiler in there is four litres. And these are? Um, uh, well, both of them, you would want to put about 18 litres in. Okay. So this is a four litre um, oiler, which means that uh, you know, you're going to massively reduce the amount of spirit that comes out at the end of it, but... You haven't got to have the tap running all the you time. Don't, no, you don't have to have the tap running all the time, okay? So, should we take a bit of a closer look at the air still? Um, we'll clear the table, have a bit of a closer look at this and talk about some of the features and benefits of it. Okay. In front of us here then, we have the Air Still Pro from Still Spirits. Now, this is a super compact uh, air still, which is, as I've said, gonna use air to cool the distillate. Let's talk through a little bit about how it works and its operation, and then maybe we can take a bit of a closer look as to some of the benefits of using this particular type of still, all right? Okay. So as I said, we've got a four litre boiler at the bottom where we put our wash. 
we have a power button at the front to turn it on. Once it's plugged in and it's on, um, it's then gonna heat up the wash in here. And then once it gets going, you'll know that it's about to start distilling because the fan will start spinning, okay? Oh yeah, so the fan's not on all the time, it just turns it on when it needs it. Yeah. And then there's like a coil in there that the vapor's gonna travel through with loads and loads of um, like uh, heat exchange um, fins, which are gonna be blowing the, the cooler air past, which cools the vapor down. It's kind of working like a car radiator. Yeah, yeah, very similar, yeah. Um, and then at the end, we have a nozzle here where the distillate's gonna come out, okay? So it does a very similar job to both of these, but where this really comes into its own is that it is a two-in-one still. What do you mean two-in-one? Well, what did I talk about previously? What were the two types so of distillation? Pot still and reflux. Yep. So the alembic they... and the column. Yep. This does both. So this is a hybrid of both. It, it is. Does both jobs. Yep. So if wow. you okay. are um, short on space, if you are a distillery that's looking to run trial batches, both of you know clean spirits or of flavoursome spirits, this will be able to achieve both of them. And the reason that it does that is that in here, underneath this cap and along this tube here, there is a column, a miniature version of the column that's on the, no. uh, in, on the T500. So if I open that up, there's a basket that allows you to add botanicals, oh, but nice. you can see inside there, saddles. All you have to do at the very end here where the alcohol comes out is change the nozzle because you need a slightly different nozzle for pot distillation as you do reflux distillation. And they just screw out and screw back in by hand, okay? And as I said, what this gives you as um, you know, small scale distilling is options. Well, options to try stuff and play around with different recipes. You could take the saddles out and then you know, add some botanicals and do a gin run and end up with you know, really flavoursome spirit at the end. Um, honestly, the world is your oyster when you're using something like this. The only limitation to this versus the other two options that we've talked about is the size of it, okay? So if you're looking to do batches that are gonna be of a larger volume, then one of the other two options is gonna be um, probably a little bit more suitable. However, with this option, yes, you might be doing a, a smaller batch, but you've got versatility and you don't have to have running water through it. And when you're running it in reflux mode, it has an automatic shut off function. So fill it up, walk away. Well, fill it up not have to keep fettling with it, okay? Some of the others, you're gonna to have to make incremental changes throughout the distillation process. So, in the power and the water flow. Yes, right. yeah, to really maximize your yield at the end. Um, the other feature on this that uh, is really cool, is, and we, we're not gonna to go too far into you know, making cuts and that kind of stuff, but whenever you do a distillation run, the first portion of the distillate that comes out is not desirable. It contains methanol, which is something you do not want to be consuming, so you need to discard that. This does that for you. It's got a little, um, a little canister at the front here, a little glass collection vial, which collects. Oh, so it's automatically measuring it out and separating that. Yeah, and that, that portion's called the four shots, and it collects that for you. So again, you don't have to worry about it. So with this self-regulating itself and the auto switch off and all the safety features, kind of dispels those other myths you hear through the grapevine of like small scale distilling oh, the still's going to explode. But these type of, it's a kit. Yeah, I know, it does. I mean, it, it's always going to be a hands-on process, like any brewing process. You can't walk away and just leave something. Um, but it does give you a huge amount of peace of mind. It's important to note that when you're running this in pot still mode, it doesn't do that. It will just keep going and going and going. Um, because when you're doing pot distillation, actually, you want to collect as much of the distillate as possible. Uh, in separate cuts so that you have the option to blend them together to create yeah. the flavours that you want. You're going to want to be there because otherwise you might miss the change over. Yeah. So there we have it. That's our overview for you of some of the options that are available for small scale distillation. Now, what we wanted to do was give you an overview of the products, an overview of kind of how they operate as much as we can. Um, and hopefully you found this informative. We're going to be covering some more of this in our future content. If you've got particular things you'd like us to cover, please put them down below in the comments. All that remains for us to say is please subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, give this video a thumbs up, 
and you can always follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok.